Good morning. Got loud speakers here. Uh, my name is Joan Claybrook. I'm uh, the uh, former administrator of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and I'm President Emeritus of Public Citizen. We're here today to hear from three electronics experts who, we will, dis who will demystify some of the electronics issues concerning Toyota sudden acceleration. They will ta challenge Toyota's claim of redundancy in the electronic systems and explain why testing for the electronic problem does not work. This contentious, contentious issue is at the heart of the DOT Department of Transportation investigation of sudden acceleration of over 5 million Toyota vehicles that Toyota claims experience this problem because of floor mats. They, uh, Toyota has sworn under oath to the Congress that their vehicles do not have an electronics problem. They have told the Department of Transportation this on numerous occasions in response to requests from writing for specific answers. And they have made this claim publicly in press conferences and with elaborate demonstrations. If Toyota is misleading the government, the investigators and the Congress, it is liable for criminal penalties under 18 U.S.C. 1001. Thus, we can count on Toyota to continue denying that any electronics problem is causing sudden acceleration. And so we in the government must turn to experts who can dissect these issues for us. Today, we have three electronics experts from the United Kingdom who do consulting all over the world in transportation and other issues. Mr. Keith Armstrong, an expert in electronics and electronic, uh, electromagnetic compatibility, and he will make the initial presentation. Also here is Dr. Anthony Anderson, an electri ele electrical engineering expert, and Brian Kirk, an electronic systems expert. Also speaking will be Clarence Ditlow, director of the Center for Auto Safety. And to tell his story about his runaway Toyota Tacoma that rolled over several times, went air airborne and rolled over some more, is Frank Visconti, a retired COO of the National Insurance Crime Bureau. He's available for interviews after the press conference. I want to thank Tom Murray of Sandusky, Ohio, who introduced, who introduced us to these experts. Mr. Murray is a philanthropist, an author, a semi-retired attorney turned activist, who in his practice has specialized in uncovering problems involving sudden acceleration caused by cruise control systems in Ford Motor Vehicles, and recently became counsel on several Toyota cases. Mr. Armstrong. Thank you, Ms. Claybrook. It's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> so I've got 15 minutes. Better get on with it. Why is sudden acceleration unresolved? Automakers claim absence of a detectable fault proves absence of design defect. But had Newton looked for gravity inside the apple that inspired him, he'd still be looking. Like gravity, we should deduce electronic failures from their effects on vehicle performance. Eliminating mechanical and human failures leaves only electronics as the cause. And that little thing on the end there is to remind me to tell you that we, can, we have lots of documents and peer-reviewed papers and all the rest of it. All of these things have uh, references, which we can point you to later on. 30 years of empirical evidence overwhelmingly points to sudden acceleration being caused by electronic system faults, undetectable by inspection or testing. If we go back a few years, this is the kind of thing you had under the hood in your car. You had this as a carburetor, or it may be a carburetor, but at least it's a, a throttle. And you see there's a metal rod linked directly to the gas pedal. And there's a spring as a failsafe. So when you press on the gas pedal, it directly controlled the uh, throttle plate. And Anthony has an example here of exactly such a system, which we can look at afterwards. These days, though, control is indirect via electronics. Um, this picture here is taken from the, the Toyota's own website. We've reversed it. Um, without changing anything in it, to uh, just so it aligns better with this, this car here. And um, you see we have the gas, uh, sensors in the gas pedals over here. Um, then we have the engine control module, which is a, a little computer. And then we have the, th the throttle motor and the throttle position sensor, which is shown over here. 
and they're connected together by electrical wires. That's the only thing that links the throttle pedal to the, uh, the gas pedal, I should say, to the throttle plate, is electrical signals on wires. No more any direct control. The problem is that electronics have weaknesses and can go wrong in many ways. I've been doing electronic design for 40 years now, and I know this for a fact, and so does everybody else in electronics. Mostly, though, when it goes wrong, it recovers, leaving no trace. For instance, if your computer crashes or does something funny and you reboot it, there's no trace. You know, you, you, if somebody said, prove to me your computer you know, went strange, you, you could never do it. It's exactly the same with the modern motor car. Many electronic throttles are not safe enough. It's easier for, the, uh, for people to blame drivers, floor mats, sticky pedals, whatever diverts attention away from the electronics. So let's look at some of the automaker's claims about electronics. You'll recognize these from the press over the past few weeks. These are all designed, apparently, to divert attention away from the real world. We're going to demystify them, and we're going to show why they are wrong. We'll compare their claims with good safety engineering principles, which are well established in all other safety aware industries and have been well established since before 2000. That's over 10 years ago now. We back up our arguments with public standards, peer reviewed, uh, international standards in most cases, peer reviewed papers, textbooks, and other world class experts that we can call upon. Electronics and automobiles, you should remember this, behaves just like electronics in all other industries. Exactly the same. The fundamental principles, the laws of physics, this sort of thing, apply in all cases. There is no pixie dust that the automakers use. Absence of evidence is an interesting uh, issue. Automakers claim that because they can find no defect after a sudden acceleration incident, then the sudden acceleration could not have been caused by a design fault. So it must have been the driver. In fact, this argument uses false logic. It's actually an incorrect form of logic. And most electronic faults don't leave any evidence especially after you've switched the ignition off, which is the same as rebooting your computer at home. Automakers claim that their so-called redundant systems, with these systems, no dangerous malfunctions can occur. In fact, the systems they use, or at least the ones we've investigated so far, are only partially redundant. Why is this? It's because they use identical technologies. <clears throat> So they just, have multi, mul they just multiply one technology you know, twice, three times, whatever. The problem with this is that they, their redundancy provides them no protection when the uh, electronics all fail the same way at the same time. Notice I didn't say if, it's just a question of when. There will be occasions when the electronics all have the same error in the same direction at the same moment. And now the way they do these redundant systems, there's no way of telling that that's a mistake. This is a fundamental flaw in the way, for instance, Toyota does its so-called redundant systems. Now we come on to my particular speciality, which is electromagnetic interference. I could bore you for days on this, and I'll try to get it through very quickly. Automakers claim they do comprehensive EMI testing. In fact, their tests don't cover most real-life EMI. EMI means electrical disturbances in the circuits, and I, I should say electromagnetic interference. They don't simulate typical faults to verify their backup or fail-safe measures work during the electromagnetic interference testing. And anyway, no practical amount of testing can ever be sufficient. And we'll return to this um, particular topic later on. And the, the reason, well, the reason why, as you'll see later on, is because there's a huge number of possible test combinations. Absolutely huge. 